Welcome back to the Nosebleed Suits TV. I'm the American Center of Crime Fire. We continue on with some of the interviews with some of the players that made up Peoria Wrestling and made it what it is today. Just being there. You know, uh, Peoria Wrestling has a, a real special place in my heart. There was a lot of backroom politics that went on, a lot of underhanded stuff, a lot of uh, dirty, a lot of dirty pool, a lot of. <laughs> There, there was a lot of things that went down, but uh, and I had my I had my fair share in it. But uh, here we are. My tantrums. <laughs> Your tantrums. Yeah, you're like. I can throw a good tantrum when I want to, and I've thrown several, and I threw several with Doug DeBoer. So. Right All right. To answer the biggest contribution is almost a conceited question to answer, because I don't know what I did, but I know when I started wrestling, my first match was the Scott Keys in front of like six people. And I know when we were, it was cold war, and I won't forget it, because there was like 200 people paid to come to the Bellevue Plaza to watch me and Kyle Rich wrestle. Two like nobodies in wrestling. I'm not, no, no disrespect to Kyle or myself, but we weren't in any big fed or no TV time, you know what I mean? It was just two guys that were born and raised in Peoria wrestling, and we sold 200 tickets to fans. So, I mean, I guess making people come and put asses every six inches, you know what I mean? That's probably my biggest thing. I would say um, my leadership would be the biggest thing because I'm and I look like a really scary guy but I'm a really nice guy and I you know like I said I brought these guys in and I didn't charge them a dime to learn how to do this and you know you know being you know as into the business as I am you know the training is not cheap and yeah. I gave it to them I gave it to them like you know, here it is come and take it learn and they did so. Me being able to not only create the wrestling, but to allow people to live their dream is my biggest accomplishment. Um, actually, I, I think Peoria Wrestling contributed more to me than I did to, to it. Uh, I learned a lot just from wrestling up there. And I wasn't as good as I am now, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I, I learned a lot from there. That's where I got my skill, so to speak. You're well known for your um, very loud vocal cords that you can shout in the center of the ring and everybody in the building yeah. can hear you without a microphone. Oh, is, that, is that necessarily a trait you want to have? <laughs> I mean, you're a powerful <laughs> ring announcer. Where, where, that's... where I'm at, people can hear me. I'm classically trained, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just, uh, I just hope everybody, I, everybody has a good time. That's all I'm ever worried about. I just want everybody to enjoy themselves, enjoy wrestling as much as I do. And if I could do that with any part of my anatomy, my voice, my body, whatever. I think my greatest contribution would just be putting on shows that I know families can come out and watch and all the uh, workers can come out. And it's always a great feel. There's no clicks in the locker room. There's no animosity between anybody. We just all have fun and we can go there and do what we love to do. And I feel that my greatest contribution to uh, Central Illinois Wrestling was I paved the way for female wrestlers that actually wanted to wrestle. Because, like I said, before I, you know, broke the mold, if you will, there had been a reputation with uh, females being ring rats, and I, I feel that I broke the mold and, you know, paved the way for other female wrestlers to show, like, hey. This woman, yeah, she's part of the locker room, and she's gonna wrestle, and she's probably gonna kick half your guys' asses. That's my contribution. I feel that I did, just making sure that other women can make a way for themselves in the area instead of just being put to the backside and treated like they're a piece of meat or a piece of ass. Hmm, I would say, I would say, help a lot of guys get their stuff down and really help them, you know, get it down and all that. I'd say I helped a lot of that. Maybe. Comedy. Comedy. I'm making comedy acceptable again. <laughs> Not, bye, Terry. Um, I'm making comedy acceptable again. It's fun. Look, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a bodybuilder, but I have fun. I, I make people laugh. You know. 
That's, that's what I contribute. I hope to keep bringing that around everywhere I go. It's fun, you know. I'm, there's no use doing it. If, if, if you're doing it for the money and you're at this level, you're not making money. So you just have fun. I'm having a blast. I think if anything else, I want to show people you can do just as much in this business by telling a joke than you can do anything else. Have some fun. That's my contribution to people here, actually. It's funny. Comedy. Uh, probably coming in as just a guy out of the crowd. I used to go to the shows. I paid my, my ticket prices. Uh, eventually, I started with the ring crew, just set and tear down. And then finally, a spot came open where they needed a referee at NGW. And the referee at the time was Kyle Rich. And he was ready to come wrestle, and they had nobody. And Ryan Phoenix again threw my name out there to the owners of NGW at the time. And they didn't really want to go for it, but they did. I did a crash course, and the rest is history. I mean, we got most of my stuff on NGW, in Midwest, and everywhere else. So you've covered a lot of my revenue. Character. I think nothing else DC has a character. I think there are a lot, not too many characters, with a lot of just wrestlers in Peoria. I don't know. <laughs> Stumps. Just putting on a good show. Just putting on a good show. Uh, so it is the worst kept secret in uh, in Central Central Illinois wrestling and who the Black Dragon is. It's me, folks. Always has been. <laughs> sorry, sorry to burst my bubble. The two of you out there that uh, didn't know that, but uh, but uh, we only had two referees back in the day, and uh, in order for me to wrestle. I had to wear a mask. And that's really the only reason I wore a mask. But in order to, uh, in order to still have two referees, I had to work under a mask. I can't really say. I mean, sometimes people just, you know, no matter what you do, sometimes people just don't like you. They don't, they don't get it, or they have their certain style and way of doing things. I mean, Josh Powers and I, we clash on styles in every single way, but that's what made it work. I don't know, I mean, it's, it's up to the fans. Uh, I think we, we keep the tag team probably 2008. We had uh, tag titles in three to four companies at that time. So uh, we kind of tapered off from there. Uh, real life kind of happens. So I uh, can't, can't maintain the same work schedule as we did back then. So that's why we kind of tapered off with the tag team. Uh, there's a lot of good tag teams out there right now. You mentioned Michael Fine. I believe you formed a tag team with him and had a little stable going. Oh, we did. I started managing Mike Fine, and then we added Klepto, and I added a few more people, and we kind of worked against Team Greatness, who was coming in at that time. So it was the great Malachi or the great Malenko and the great. Shady. No, it's Malachi. It was Malenko at that point, though. When he started, it was the great Malenko and the great Cheyenne, and then Grace. Michaels. Michaels, Chris Michaels. So they needed opponents, and Mike Vine, Klepto, and I put the bill, and that's who we started with. Well, I mean, the only person we had at that time was Peanut. She wasn't a tourist, she was a tomboy, and I thought NGW needed some class, so that's where it came from. The biggest face of Peoria Wrestling? No doubt in my mind, man. Every time the guy comes out, I'm out. He's just, he's just over. Brian Phoenix is is crazy, crazy over. Um, anywhere these guys go, I mean, they're just over. Uh, I've had the pleasure of speaking with them, sharing the locker room with them. I was there when Ryan Phoenix started, uh, you know, and I watched him blossom from a guy that literally didn't know nothing to one of the top guys in the area, you know. I don't hold ill will against anybody anymore because my reputation kind of preceded me as being the expletive deleted, I guess you could say. Uh, but. Yeah, I'd have to say those two. And there's a lot of other guys that are right up there at that caliber. But honestly, at this point, I'm really, really tired. Um, and there's there's a lot of guys. So obviously, I, I'll always think that my brother's number one. Right now, well, I mean, the obvious answer is probably going to be Ryan Phoenix since he started at the athletic club. I mean, that's the only obvious answer because he's right there at Greenway. He's a, one of their main guys now. And it's only looking in the future. Guys, wonderful. Hopefully, one day I can have half the talent he's got, and maybe do half the things he's gonna do. I've been out of it so long, I don't know, but I know that I know that Jeff is doing, uh, Ryan Phoenix is doing a lot of good things. So I'm gonna stick with Ryan Phoenix. Uh, I'd like to think that it's probably 
Phoenix and myself, and maybe Big Slam Stewart. Uh, he's not really from the Pure area, but we, you know, we all from here. So, I think, I think Phoenix are three of us. I'm sorry, I'm about to say Ryan Phoenix. Bad ass dude, bad ass He's here, he's, he's present, we'll see it. Right now, Chris Hazard's the man. He, he beat uh, Ryan Phoenix at uh, Hard of Illinois Fair Show. And I don't know where he, his career is going to be going from that moment, but you know, he put Phoenix in his place, so that's all that you know. That's all that needed to be done. You know, he'll, he'll probably move on to capture the title, I'm sure. And he just made a comeback because he's been active the last few years. Right now, I'm going to have to go probably with Ryan Phoenix. Popular you know, answer. <laughs> it's a, well, you know. It is what it is, and of course, not really being in the thick of things, so to speak, as more recently, but, uh, you know, um, that's what I would have to say based, just based on talking to other people who are more active in the industry at the moment. That's what I was here. You know, I hear about Ryan Phoenix from people who I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ryan Phoenix, hands down. He's the guy that stuck through it, you know, whatever drama happened. He, for whatever, whatever reason, never left, never packed up his bags and went. Um, uh, some of us, you know, you know, we just grew tired of it. We butted heads with the management, whoever it may have been at the time. And, uh, his, you know, injuries happened. I understand that. But, but Ryan Phoenix was always there. Uh, he was never too smart for the business, and I've always I've always appreciated that for him. Uh, he was never, you know, he always listened to everybody. He, that's uh, when I when when I, when I see new guys, that's what I tell them. You gotta listen to everybody, no matter if they're conflicting opinions, you know, if they're absolute opposite opinions. You still gotta listen to them, still soak it in. Um, and he was one of those guys that you know he didn't let any, he didn't let the bad get to him. He made the most of any situation he was handed, and you know, from point A to point B, he was one of the you know. Uh, you know, he was the guy they put on posters. I mean, Alex loved that guy when he was promoting him. Um, I absolutely do believe that Ryan Phoenix is the, is the face, will always be the face, uh, at least for another hundred years. Um, I don't see him quitting anytime soon. Well, that is, unless LaSalle kills him. Um, but uh, Ryan Phoenix uh, is definitely the face of Peoria Wrestling. Normally, I would always say Ryan Phoenix. And because Ryan Phoenix was Peoria wrestling. I mean, good God, people worship the ground he walked on. I know, I'm, I'm glad that he's finally expanding out. Honestly, I'm still gonna have to stick with Ryan Phoenix. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I, you know, there's there's a lot of other noticeable guys, but I think Peoria wrestling that's the first guy that pops in my head. Uh, Ryan Phoenix. Ryan Phoenix. All right. Peoria wrestling. As of right now, anyway. Right. But back before he was around, I was basically really wrestling. And that's the way it's going to be. So you're going to take it back. All right. Damn right I'm taking my spot back. I don't care how long it takes. All right. As a worker, I would definitely have to say Ryan Phoenix. Uh, anywhere we go, anywhere I've seen that man perform, everybody knows who he is. He's you know, one of the best wrestlers I've seen in you know, quite some time. Ryan Phoenix would have to be the first person that I think of. I don't know if that's everybody else's answer. <laughs> Me, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Who, all right, you ask people who came from Peoria and the first name they're gonna say is mine, Alex, because he was the promoter, and probably Justin McIntyre, because he had a mouth nobody could forget. Those are three things I think of when I think of Peoria. The face of Peoria wrestling, those are the three names I know the most of. And I'm only saying me because I'm the one guy who never quit. I started and didn't stop, you know what I mean? I never got like tired of it or into an argument with a promoter so I couldn't wrestle no more. Didn't like the way I was being booked or how many times I took a fall. It's not about that. It's about making people happy and making them show up to the next show. You already sold the people in the house, sell the next ticket. And a lot of guys don't understand wrestling. That's the biggest problem in Peoria wrestling is people don't understand what it is. They think it's to show off for a girl or to show off for fans or to show off for this. No, it's to sell. You're, you're, you're a businessman. You're a salesperson. You got to make people want you even when you're not around. I mean, when your music hits and they start cheering, you're doing something right. They don't have to see you, they just have to know you're coming. 
Uh, no, because they were, for some reason, even though they were in Bloomington, they, they, they didn't represent Peoria in a lot of ways. They were, they were definitely guys that wanted that, that definitely wanted that national exposure from day one. Um, they didn't, you know, they've never, like we always call them the Bloomington boys, you know, they added Brubaker, who was another Bloomington boy, and you had access, to, of course, uh, and he was a Bloomington boy. Uh, but the thing was, is that they, they didn't really represent anybody but themselves, and uh, they're self-promoters, and that's good, that's a good thing. But they weren't really, you know, you didn't really think of Peoria because of it. Like when you saw the PWF 500, you didn't think of Peoria. Yeah, you, know, you didn't even think of LaSalle, which is where, you know, they, they, they make, uh, you know, they bring in a lot of people. Uh, you think they they're, 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 they transcend whatever town, other than the Bloomington Boys, which is what well, they'll always be known as, as people who knew them back in the day. I'd say a face, but the issue with those two is I know no one's seen them in Peoria anymore. And they're really from Bloomington, where I'm from, just throwing that out there, not Peoria. Uh, but no, I haven't seen them in a long time. And you know what? Congratulations. I didn't know they made the PWA 500. Congratulations to both those boys. I've always really liked those guys uh, on a personal level. They're good kids. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I'm glad to see that someone I know and someone that lives down the street from me has you know, made something. That's very cool. Uh, my favorite memory is when uh, Scooter grew this uh, big mountain man beard and uh, started licking himself like a cat behind me. That was pretty awesome. Just today. <laughs> Actually, just right now. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Two came yesterday. Oh my God. You're making me bust off laughing and ruin this interview. I can't use any of this. Oh my God. There's been so many. I mean, working with Access and you know Egos Incorporated and working with Sherry Malone and working against the Beast of Power, but. I'd say definitely my memories with working as, with Stumpy as the Dreamboats are definitely things that I remember that I'm always going to remember. So probably our table match It's usually what comes to my brain. Uh, probably, I mean, NGW, just everything. Everybody I met, there's still most of them are here. You know, Stumpy, DTM, BP, Scott Keys, whatever you want to call them. Justin, McIntyre, Alex. I met a lot of friends that I talked to in, a, in and out of wrestling. So, you know. uh, actually transitioning Thunder, uh, TWF North, into NWF. I was putting new, something fresh when we flipped over from TWF North to NW. Regardless of what Mr. Power says, it's not dead because there's somebody still living. Um, me and Josh Powers wrestling, uh, the uh, Disrobe Your Bow match that has to be right up there. That match was a lot of fun. And it has 10,000, 20,000 views. <laughs> well, me in a 90, can you really blame someone for wanting to watch and having that many views? Uh, is this just an NGW or? Anything. Yeah, some of my favorite NGW memories, I guess, would be at the Adrenaline. I had a really good match there with uh, Matt Cage and Casey Jackson. Taz was my partner. That was really fun. The Love and Draw Battle Royal was really fun in Adrenaline. Um, anything we just did in Novio, that I mentioned Phoenix was a whole lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and yeah, anything we did in Novio had fun. I really think there's been too many accounts. I mean, I can, I can think to just about every show I've ever been in or every promotion I've worked for in Peoria. And I can always think of great things from all of them. I don't think there's really one defining moment. I remember if you were wrestling, there's so many of them, I was involved in so many of them, so I mean, I can't really pinpoint a, a, a one moment because I was involved in so many of the, the different matches, referee, and, and I have so many involvements and parts and all that, so I really can't pinpoint a spot because I was in a lot of it. Uh, probably the last show that I did, or yeah, the last show and the second to last show, I did a uh, Won the Battle Royal and wrestled like four matches in the same night, and then I wrestled uh, the six man tag with Al Snow. Those are probably the two most memorable nights. Um, soon after uh, Alex Larson took over from Apocalypse in Peoria, we did a show at the Madison Theater, and even it was, it was a real drama filled, filled time. Nobody was really sure what, was, what Alex had in store. And, because Alex is a very ambitious guy, but you can only take ambition so far. Um, so we got the show at the Madison, and nobody, I wouldn't say anybody, nobody had any faith in it, but nobody was sure what was going to happen. 
uh, we get in there and we were able to watch, the guys were able to watch the show from the balcony. Uh, so when the first match happened, they threw together a, a dark match between uh, Cody Cash and Diablo de Azul. And they were like, all right, well, that, that you know, it's a dark match, it's not going to mean much. Uh, the match happens, and all our faith was restored in that one match. And you wouldn't have thought that from Cody Cash and Diablo de Azul, but they really, everybody was pumped after that. Everybody's uh, attention went to making that show the best they possibly could. Uh, we had, a, it's still one of the best shows they've ever done, especially that early in the stages. Uh, we, 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 it really pumped us up, and the, the crowd was into that first match, and it wasn't even much, you know, of a match. They did probably five minutes, and, you know, they did that, and Deacon Hobbs did a run in, and then uh, that got a huge reaction, and we were like, all right, we are ready to do this. Uh, and me and Keys had a lighter match, my only lighter match, thank God, uh, in that, uh, in that, uh, that, that event. That was just, that, that show, that whole show was, it was really good, because even if, you know, times, not every show is going to be perfect. Not every every company is going to have uh, a string of perfect shows from point A to point B. But those shows that that, that really lift you up. That like you know what? Yeah, this is this is good. You ever, if you get those every once in a while, it's a good thing. Oh man, there's so many. Um, there was the very first the, the very first VBI it was a blast. Um, I think that was just a great show from top to bottom. The whole card was. Amazing. Amazing. Um, the very the very first show that NGW did in the uh, Dragon's Dome was a blast show. I think it was. I know the main event was Phoenix and, and, and uh, Kyle Rich in the bar bar match, but the whole card there was a solid card. I think those were just two phenomenal shows that were blast. Personally, I, the best fun I ever had in Peoria was was I tagged with uh, Gilbert Lewis one night against uh, Abuse of Power, and we just kind of a thrown together a match, but it was a lot of fun. It really, really was. Um, and there were a lot of fun experiences in all honesty. I've made some good friends from that era. Uh, I really have. My favorite memory would have been when I uh, dropped the tile to Chester at that uh, um, armory, that uh, National Guard, that armory. And we, uh, we did a show. We did Ace of Spades there. And uh, he went through four other guys to wrestle me. And I put him over big. And it was, and it was a good match. And when, and when it was over, knew it was over, they counted to three, and it was, uh, it was just huge. The place went crazy when they finally uh, won the title for me, because we fought back and forth. And we it was a four-way, right? No, it was, no, Ace of Spades was, uh, it was like, a, it's a roulette thing. There's four guys, and it's two start, whoever wins that one goes on, all the way up to the last guy, which is the champion, which was me. And Jester went through, uh, went through Chris Hazard, he went through, uh, Tripsy, and there's another guy I can't think of offhand. No, it, it'll be three other guys because there's four guys in the whole thing. I think. So then Andy wrestled me. What year was that? Because I'm thinking it might have been my very first NGW show. Possibly. We did a superplex. We did a superplex in the ceiling where we probably should have done a superplex. My feet hit the ceiling. It was pretty interesting. Kind of helped me get over. It's good stuff. <laughs> I have to say, what an NGW title. By far, by far. Even though I held the belt for only a week, still it counts, don't it? So you did have, you did hold the heavyweight belt? I did not know that. Wow. Trouble here. My favorite moment. I would have to say uh, barbed wire match, the very first uh, Dragon's Belt show. Kyle Rich and uh, Ryan Phoenix, and I mean there was, I mean that was just two guys going against each other in the barbed wire match, and that, that for some reason that one just sticks out in my mind. There's a whole bunch. I mean I could go, you give me a few minutes, and I probably come up with a hundred of them, but that one jumps out right off the bat. Yeah, those were all great. We had a great time at all. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this year. Didn't you win the first one? Black Dragon won the very first one. Yes, Black Dragon, Rekha Kia. Uh, Chris Walker from the last one. Some great people we've had Keith on that card yeah. from all over the state. Not just the state, we had Jerry Webb, Jerry F. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we had uh, some great times. And hopefully we'll have them again. Greatest memory of Peoria Wrestling. My greatest memory of Peoria Wrestling probably would have been my first show. 
it would have been, and at the time it was TWF. And it was their Thunder Brawl Supercard show at the Peoria Athletic Club. Came in cold. My first show, Supercard, ended up working it mostly by myself. Just completely off the cuff, trying to get around and get everybody's name straight. Yeah, that happened. That that worked out really well. <laughs> Did you commentate the whole show or did you just ring announce it? I commentated and announced the whole show. And um, another young man who, it, it, his name escapes me at the time, who was uh, up from uh, TWF South, he came out and did help me out and uh, for a little while, but uh, the show started late. It was, uh, the show itself went off pretty good, um, but it was kind of behind the scenes, it was kind of Murphy's Law that day. Mm -hmm. You know, every little thing that could go wrong did, and we started way late, and we had no break, no intermission. Um, ended up being out there for in between two and a half to three hours. And I was holding, for that last hour and a quarter, I was holding it. Ooh. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you could have taken a, I mean, you could have done the ring announcement and then went to the back for a moment. I mean, you didn't have to commentate the match. <laughs> well, I was. I wanted to, I was, I was the only person there, and I was trying to make an impression. They killed me. My friends, uh, Jester and Sinister, brought me in. They hyped me up, probably quite a good little bit more than they should have. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't let do anything to let them down. It was that simple. But uh, that was uh, my most vivid memory, was my first show. Well, I think two things. It can depend greatly. Um, it can enhance a show where you don't have a lot of talent that's familiar with each other. Um, but more importantly, I think it, it helps out tremendously when you are working a show in unfamiliar territory. You know, and you are working with, working for an audience who doesn't know you doesn't know the organization, doesn't know any of the workers. So, you know, that's a, in my mind, that's where it really helps a lot because the fans, they don't have any backstory. The live commentary at a show in unfamiliar, unfamiliar territory gives the audience the background they need to help them get into the show, to help them have a vested interest in Yes, we like this guy. He's a great guy. I, I want to clap for him. Oh, I don't. Oh, that guy. Oh no, he's a horrible person. We hate him. Who? Who on that guy? You know. Other if uh, if the you don't they don't have any backstory to go with. You know. What, what do the fans do? Do you get frustrated that um, you're yelling at what's happening in the ring and the referee just kind of acts like he? He's completely deaf, dumb, and blind to what you're saying. Because that has irritated me <laughs> when I've done it. Well, yeah, I, it's, that's just something that, uh, you know, that I just learned to ignore a long time ago. It's, you know, it's either, you know, just shrug and move on. You know, that's, that's, that's just, you know, that's the, that's a, to me, is a side issue. I want to keep the focus regardless of what the referee is doing or not doing or what he is or is not on top of. I want to try and keep the focus on the workers. So, you know, what the referee does or doesn't do, to, to me, it's it, it, not that it's not important, not that their role isn't important, their role is very important. But, you know, what, what, they, what they do or don't do, I don't worry about that. Nothing I can do about it anyway. We are all out of time for this edition of the Nosebleed Seats. Next week, we'll have the third and final part of our interviews at the Peoria Wrestling Reunion Show.